Amen. 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 If you would, may I have your attention to the book of Revelation chapter 3, beginning in verse number 20. So as was read until you're here, it's including in verse number 22. Amen. Amen. Revelation chapter 20, chapter 3, verse 20 through 22, and say amen. 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 I want you to set as a backdrop um, the, uh, the outrage of the first sentence in the scripture. The text says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. I'm reminded some time ago in 2009, June 16th, a scholarly professor by the name of James uh, Gate, Gates Jr., who lived in Cambridge, Massachusetts, had returned from a trip in China to do some ancestral research. And as he uh, <coughs> returned to his home, he noticed that his door was jammed not be open. And so the driver got out of the car and began to assist him, the owner, the master of the house, to get into his home. And as he is pushing on the door, trying to pry the door open, uh, a neighbor saw two males at the door and called the police out of concern. And the police pulled up and he identified himself as the owner of the house and made the officer aware, kind of say that this is where the story went one way or the other on both sides, uh, that he was simply trying to get in his house and not break it into his home. And consequently, he was arrested for knocking on the door of his own house and trying to get into his own house uh, as a professor, as an Afro-American who may now have spawned another type of stereotypism of folk who look apart but in fact was the master of the house. Amen. Could you imagine being arrested for trying to get into your own house? Could you imagine having to uh, knock on the door at your house to get in. How many of you have homes right now? Could you imagine having to come to your house and knock on the door? The text says that if you can understand that for a moment, pay attention, behold. And that's why it starts off, behold, pay attention because the house that I'm speaking about this morning belongs to Jesus. Amen. And in it outrageous, in it outlandish that Jesus, who paid for our sins, who perpetuated for our sins, he is the atonement for man's sin, who, who owns us, who you have been bought with a price, and you are not your own. In it outrageous that John says, behold, pay attention, that Jesus, the owner, the master of the house, is standing knocking at the door. I want to talk to you this morning, those of you that are full of the Spirit, about he's knocking at the door. Because you look at your neighbor and say, Jesus, y'all not going to say, y'all ain't going to have church this morning. Y'all got a bad attitude this morning. That's all right. We're going to have church anyway. Can you look at your neighbor and say, Jesus, Jesus. is knocking at the door. Whose door? His door. Jesus is knocking at the door uh, of his house. And, and he's knocking at the door of the church of the Laodiceans. And they were known for folk who were indecisive, folk who uh, are trapped in the middle, and folk who are wrestling with whether or not they're going to go to the door. And so you know, in the beginning of these verses, he says that, uh, because you're neither warm or cold, I will spew you from uh, my mouth. And so, uh, when we think about this as Christians this morning, 
I don't know what spirit you're in, but I'm in a hot spirit. I, I'm on fire for the Lord. I'm not dismayed by anything on the external. I'm, I'm conscientious about the internal because I realize that we're in a period or a state where God is knocking at the door. And, and if we're not careful, we're going to miss out. And, and if we don't open that door, we're going to find ourselves in a world of trouble. And, and we're going to find ourselves with the owner knocking on the door. But the problem is when the knocking stops. When the knocking stops. When he's knocking on the door, he has given you an opportunity. He's given you an opportunity to overcome. Notice what he says after this. He says, if any man were here and open the door, I will come into him. I will come into him and I will sup with him. And he says that when you overcome, then I will grant you a seat in my, in, uh, in my throne. Not on my throne. And let me be clear, not on my throne, but what? In my throne. You will never be on the throne. But he'll give you a seat. He says, just as when I overcame, I was granted a seat at or uh, in, uh, in my father's throne. Then he said, "The spirit, those that have the spirit, let I want you to hear those who are led by the spirit. Folk who are not listening to God this morning will not connect with this lesson because you have to be in a spiritual state in which you're willing to listen to the knock at the door. Amen. And folk that are sitting here right now will sit right here and hear a message that can impact their life, that can provide them more information to be a judiciary tool to help them in the time of salvation. But you have to be in the spirit. Is there anybody in the spirit? this morning that's ready to receive the word of God. Because God, on every one of our doors, he's knocking this morning. You need to learn how to listen to the spirit because there have been times in which God has tried to speak you through his word, but you're not listening. And because you're not listening, you're not opening the doors. And because you're not opening doors, one day the knocking is going to stop. And when the knocking stops, you're going to have a problem. Well, preacher, I was going through this, I was going through that. No, God was knocking on your door. Sometimes God allows you to go through stuff, and he knocks on your door, and you're hearing the wrong thing. Well, I've been through ups and downs and valleys, and I've been through trips that have blown my mind. I, I don't even know what it's about. It's because you missed the knock on the door. God commands all men everywhere to repent from their sins. Amen. He's knocking. Knocking at the door. Why is it? Why is it that, and how is it that the master has the knock on his door? How is it he paid for the church? Am I right about it? Yeah. And that's whatever it is, his church. He purchased the church. In order to get in the church, you have to go through him. But somehow, the positions have changed. And now, he's on the outside knocking on the door. He's knocking on the doors of attitudes. He's knocking on the doors of slowfulness and laziness. He's knocking on the doors of traditionalists this morning. He's knocking on the doors of rebellious spirit. He's knocking on the doors of spiritual wickedness. He's knocking on the doors of hatefulness and grudgefulness. He's knocking on the doors of folk who have their mind made up that there is no way in the world that Jesus will ever get back in here again. And he says, pay attention because I'm knocking on your door. You're burying your children's early because he's knocking on the door. You're seeing more folk go to the penitentiary because he's knocking on the door. You're seeing folk leave the church rather than come to church because he's knocking on the door. Behold, he's knocking on your door. Why is it? Why? Why is he knocking on the door? Perhaps when he stepped out just for a moment to go pave a way for you and for I, somebody broke in came in through some other way and have locked the door. The Bible says in verse 74 and verse number 2, he said that there are some seducing spirits that have their conscience seared. I want you to know the person on the inside of the door has seared the door with a hot iron. Lies and hypocrisy 
grace through their veins and the energy of self-will and self-promotion runs all over their body. The door is breaking on the door and the person is saying, you better shut up. I'm not coming to this door. You know how we all the folk knock on our door and they didn't even call first? Yeah. Who is it? Oh, you knocking on my door. Oh, you know I know it like that. I'll come over to some of your houses without calling. I see how big your eyes get and how they dilate. And you being just as nice to me, how do you do it? Do your phone work? Yeah, it work. You know it knocking on my door. Tomorrow, I'm just telling you, he's knocking at the door. Praise God. 
your salvation in this life. And I want you to know, he's knocking at the door. Things are not going to get you. need to open the door. Why won't they open the door? Who's inside that won't open the door? Mark chapter 3 and verse 27. Jesus said, well, here's the problem. They were calling Jesus a devil. And Jesus looked at us and let me tell you something. Go ahead and read it. He talks about the strong man. Read He said, no man can enter into the what? I'm like, there's some folk that's in the house that you just can't reach. And the reason he won't let you in the house is because he likes the stuff that he's doing behind closed doors. I wish I had five people for the Holy Ghost this morning trying to help somebody. The strong man represents you. The door is between you and Christ. And Christ is saying that when I come into a house, I mess up the stuff that you like to do in the house by raising your standard of living. You can't profess to have Christ in your house and the devil throwing a party at the same time. Somebody ought to shout amen. If I was the devil, I would never preach against sin, but I would tell you anything about happiness and power and glory and let your house stay in disarray. But when you deal with the strong man that can sit in the house of God, listen to the word of God, look at you in the wrong way eyes and say, you ain't talking to me because this is my house. If it was possible, they try to take the house from God himself. You tell you something. God is just being polite. God don't have to knock on the door. He can walk through the door. He can knock the door. He can tear the house out if he want to. You just fooling yourself. You just a renter for a little while. For the end is earthly tabernacle where it is off. There's another house not made with hands. Second Corinthians 5, 1 through 4. Each house up in the heaven. This is not your house. And when God comes to the house, he says, the first thing I'm going to do is find the strong man. Uh-huh. If there's some gambling going on in the house, yeah. he's going to tie it up. Yeah. If there's some fornication going on in the house, yeah. he's going to tie it up. If there's some jig jig drinking in the house, yeah. he's going to mess it up. What you mean? You didn't get the illnesses in your liver by accident. You got sick because the wages of sin is death. If you weren't drinking behind closed doors, And, and the, to me, the strongest man behind the walls is the intellectual strong man because he can rationalize and idealize his lost condition. And he doesn't want God in the house because they're just intelligent enough to know that we got all this Jesus in the house, it's going to mess up the homeostasism in the house. And so what they'll do is they'll simply ignore the knocking at the door. When I get a text message from the preacher saying, come to church, I get upset because you done got that stuff in my house. You done sent a message. I done told you to quit texting me. <laughs> this is I'm grown. I come to church when I want to. Oh my God, somebody said amen. You don't tell me nothing. You know what's happening? I done slipped some word and knocked through the door and the strong man is upset. Because I was sitting having a good time until you messed it up. Now I got to remember that he's knocking. Y'all ought to say amen. I ain't talking to nobody here. I know y'all don't act like that. Y'all ought to say amen. Because he's knocking. And he's knocking at the what? God's house is God's time. 
and you have enough proof in which time is going to expire and you won't hear the knocks anymore. When you're laying down dead with your tongue sealed in your mouth, it is because time has run out. The Bible says, Hebrews 9 27, what is appointed once unto me in the die, and after this is the judgment. Open the door before the time run out. Amen. Open the door before the time run out. He's been knocking for us since you've been a child. God's been knocking on the door. When you, he delivered you from one thing or another, he was knocking at the door. When folk hurt you and God revealed to them that they were knocking in the first place, he was knocking on your door to bring you to a conscious state that he's God all by himself. And that all what you need more than anything. When you felt, when you felt the worst thing could have happened to you, it was because God brought you to a state that you realized that without him, you can't make it. You need to open the door this morning. You need to open the door this morning. When you were hungry, he was trying to show you John 6, verse number 61, that he is the bread, that he is his words of flesh, that they are like him, that they are quickened in the spirit that is inside of you, that will sustain you more than the food of this world. It's the flesh of nothing. The words he speaks, they are spirit and they are life. He's knocking at your door. Church, when you open up your door, He's knocking on the door saying it's time for evangelism to take place in your life. He's knocking on the door saying it's time for you to become a missionary in the work field of the church. He's knocking on your door telling you it's time for you to get off the couch and do nothing. And become a do something Christian. Church, he's knocking at the door. Do you hear him knocking at the door this morning? Why? Why won't folk open the door? Mark 9 and verse number 27. Listen to the Bible. The Bible says in Mark 9 and uh, verse number 12, I'm sorry, Mark 9 and verse number 12, the Bible says that perhaps uh, we can use this as a launching pass here. Perhaps they're going to open the door because they're confused with who's at the door. Uh, nowadays we have over six, seven hundred knocks coming to the door. Am I right about it? You don't know if it's a mom, you don't know what it is knocking on the door. And so perhaps they're confused as they were in Mark 9 and 12. They thought Elijah, Elijah was walking, was knocking at the door. And Jesus said, no, it's not him that's knocking at the door. For verily he has come to put all things in order. He said, but it is written that the Son of Man. In other words, Jesus said, it's not him that's your Savior. But who's your Savior? Christ, I'm your Savior. And, and it seemed to me that we open the door for the wrong folk all the time. It, it seemed like, but, but I hear Jesus say in John chapter 10 that my sheep hear my voice. That's why he says, he that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Which means that there's some different type of listening going on. It's funny to me, I ain't telling nobody, that you can hear all the modern rap songs and all the modern love songs, but can't hear Jesus knocking at the door. What 
you mean say that no if you hear a knock on the door you ignore the knock on the door that's sitting in that no when you hear the preacher preach and you have an illuminated call to look at the preacher rather than look at the word praise God you'll set the counsel of God and not Proverbs chapter 1 verse 25 he said and would not all my counsel but you have set at no all my counsel all my instruction that I've sent you through the word of God you have shook a rebellious fist at and rolled your eyes and refused to take heed but I'm knocking at the door am I right about it Acts chapter 4 and verse number 11 the Bible says this is that stone that was set at no of you builders in other words you chose something else and set Jesus aside when you choose another church you set the church of Christ aside and when you set it at no you need to know one thing one day one day the knock is going to stop and when the knock is stop You'll be in a world of trouble. Amen. But what, 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 what's some of the other problems? We know that it can be the man inside, the strong man. The strong man. There's somebody that even the word of God doesn't penetrate their hearts. Mm -hmm. The strong man. He has to be bound first. So you hear the knocks. There's some stuff you like to do and some ways you got that are so entrenched in your psyche that Jesus can't even reach you right now. It may be that when he left, you took over and brought tradition in and say, since Jesus is gone to prayer place, this is my place. And this is how we do it. You heard, you know those type of folk. And this is the way we used to do it. This is the way we used to do it. Well, this is all I know. And God is 